Hi friends, it's Dana here. Today I'm reading you a story all about the microbes in your gut. Look how cute they look. I know a lot of people are afraid of microbes or germs or bacteria, but they're actually extremely important for your health. And so I hope you enjoy learning about them. In fact, I had some trouble, tummy troubles about a month ago and my doctor, instead of prescribing me medicine, prescribed me these probiotic pills, which are just these little itty bitty guys right here. You see that? This little pill has a billion live little cultures of microbes. That means there's a billion microbes in here. And I eat one of these once a day and it helps my stomach stay really, really healthy. And I don't have any tummy troubles anymore. So that's how important those things are. And you're gonna learn all about them today in A Garden in Your Belly. It's by Marsha DeYans. So here we go. Inside you flows a great river with many folds and turns. If you stretched this river into a straight line, it would be 10 times as tall as you are. The river is your intestines. It nourishes a garden in your belly full of life and wonder called the microbiome. The garden is so small you can't see it unless you have a big microscope. But it's so big that if you lined up all its tiny living microorganisms end to end, they would reach the moon. Where does your garden come from? You got your first seeds when you were born. You collect more microbial sprouts by breathing, touching and eating and playing. You get new microbes from your dog, your best friend, from the ground underfoot, from food, and even from this book. But no one on earth has a garden exactly like yours. What's it doing in there? Blooming, of course, and making you, you. Your microorganisms come in many forms. Some are simple, some are fancy, some are friendly, and some are not. Some kinds have existed for a million years. Most microorganisms help your body do things it cannot do by itself. They protect you and the river every minute they're awake. And yes, they sleep too. As food passes through the river, each kind of critter has a different job to do. The more variety your garden has, the better. Your microbes harvest what they need to create energy and to fight germs. They also grow more microbes like themselves. Your garden microorganisms put out fires and take the garbage out. Sometimes they have adventures and strange encounters. They can even influence your thoughts and feelings. Some of your microbes are connected to nervousness. They can make you feel like a restless butterfly. Other critters are laid back, making you feel like a lotus floating on a pond. Your microorganisms send you messages by adding froggy gurgles to the river when they want fertilizer to help them grow strong. They can make a beastly growl when you feed them something they don't like. You can't talk to them directly, but when you're playing outside, breathing fresh air and drinking lots of water, the microbes know and they're happy. Doing these things is like sending care packages down the river to keep them strong. After all, every garden needs attention and love. If your garden critters get too hungry because you forgot to send healthy food, they get weak. Then the bad microbes can move into the garden like weeds. Bad microbes produce toxins that get in the river. Your garden doesn't like pollution in the river, in the air, or anywhere. Pollution makes the garden weak, which means the weeds can move in and overpower your protectors. What do the weeds like? Sweets. 
junk food. Yes. Just as the good guys can talk to you, the bad can too. They don't mind sending you messages to control your brain. If you eat only junk food, the next thing you know, you don't care for veggies and fruits or jumping and moving. You might even get sick. That's when it's time to grow back your protectors. How do you grow your protectors and take care of them? Feed them. Sweets? Junk food? No. Give me some fruit, yogurt, nuts, and veggies. Because that's what the good guys in the garden like. Take good care of your garden and it will always have your back and belly and heart and head. All of you. All right, guys, I'm going to read to you a little bit about what is a microbiome. A microbiome includes all the microorganisms living in a particular environment. The microorganisms living in and on the human body are one of the best examples of a microbiome. At this moment, two to six pounds of microbes are living in and on you. You're home to trillions of microorganisms, which are collectively known as the microbiome. Your gut microbiome is constantly changing. At first, it is impacted by your parents, but it changes with every breath you take, every food you eat, and every person you meet. The microbiome works best when there are lots of different kinds of microorganisms, bacteria and microbes working together. The more diverse your microbiome, the stronger it is. Scientists say that each microbiome needs different types of microorganisms to be healthy. There is no one microorganism that is the best to have in your microbiome. However, scientists have found that people with an abundance of bacteriodetes and firmicutes bacteria in their guts have the healthiest microbiomes. They may be part of what scientists call the functional core of the gut microbiome. So there you have it, friends. There are some fun facts about the microbiome, and I think the most important part is it matters what you feed your microbiome to make it happy. So I hope you all go out and make happy gardens out of your gut after reading this book. <laughs> Thanks so much for reading with me, friends. Bye.